Hey everybody, Scott Burnett here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good day. Today's video is about the Blink camera system. Not about the system, but the app that runs on your phone. Uh, this is iPhone, iPad today. I don't have an Android phone. If I did, I would show you that one. But today we're going to put the application up here. I'm going to show you the tips and uh, little things that I do to get the good battery life, uh, good performance. This is one of the systems that you put in that I've put in and I don't ever touch. Uh, I have several cameras up at my brother's house and I'm pretty sure that we don't touch them and they just sit and work. And that's what I like having at home. I like having things that I don't have to sit there and fuss about. Um, where I work for a living, you know, I have to, I have to troubleshoot and fix things all the time and it's nice having something here at home that you don't have to. Down in the chapters, we're gonna go through and I'm gonna put chapter markers on all this stuff. Let me put the phone up here on the screen or the application up on the screen and I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, so here in the app, first off, if you've set your system up, you've got the app, at, you know, Android or iPhone, so if, as you can see right here, I have three cameras set up. I have the back door, backyard, and garage. And at the bottom, I have the sync module. And then you have controls and your disarm and armed. So what we're going to do, we're going to go in the settings. And if you look right here on the right where it says back door, there's three little lines like a little hamburger menu. We're going to hit that little hamburger menu. And we see... One, two, three, four, five, six little boxes. The first one is general settings under device settings. So general settings. We have the device name, network status, firmware. So one of the first things I do when I after I get the system set up, I give the camera a name. You know, it comes with a name, but it's like a serial number, and that means squat to me. I don't like that at all. So I actually named this one back door. You could name it front yard, driveway front door, middle of the street. I mean, you name it whatever you want to, whatever is makes you comfortable and you can just look at it and go, okay, it's back door. We got that. If you go down a little bit, you have details, you have the battery level and it says, okay. And I've had this system in just a little over a year and these are the same batteries. These are uh, Everett Energizer Alkaline and I have not touched them but I don't have everything cranked as wide open as it'll go. And I'll show you that here in just a little bit. Firmware version 10.62, this is June, 2023. Uh, everything is up to date and a whole bit. The status LED, there's a little light on front of the camera. I wish I had brought it up here. I'll try to take a picture of it and put it right here. Uh, you can have it come on while recording or you can have it off and that's if you don't want somebody to know that you're recording them like they're walking across the yard or something um, the network it shows a connection to wi-fi and a connection to the sync module which the sync module is right over here on the wall and at the bottom we have a temperature and it's showing 85 degrees on the camera. It is showing 81 outside right now. And something I didn't know about, you know, I don't fool with the temperature on these things, but you can set the alert if it goes above or below a certain temperature, you can have it alert you. So you may have to move it or put it in some shade or something like that, but you can calibrate the temperature you can actually set the camera next to a thermometer and after about 15 minutes you can calibrate the thermometer in the camera which i didn't know which is pretty neat deal so those are the general settings if we go down one to motion settings you can turn motion detection off and on uh you can do it right here i don't know why you would want to turn it off unless you're having a lot of false triggers you're having a lot of kids over playing or a party or something, you wanna turn it off so you're not getting all the notifications on your phone. Uh, motion sensitivity, you can run the slider back and forth. That is one of these things you have to play with to see 
uh, where the camera is triggering at and how much it takes to trigger. Uh, I've got mine set at two, which is very low. If you turn it up, you know, five, six, seven, eight, whatever, it's going to use your battery more. You're going to run the battery down. Uh, that's one of the things you got to look at. Every setting that you do, you have to worry about running the battery down. Motion zones is the next one. Customize motion detection to fit your home and reduce unwanted alerts. And if we look at it, I have some motion zones set up. And all you do is go and uncheck where you don't want the camera to trigger. And you can actually go to the advanced mode down here on the bottom and you can fine tune that and get little tiny squares to um, allow you to trigger in certain places. To the right of this is privacy zones. And you can actually, if there's something around that camera you don't want to be on the video or you don't want to trigger, you can actually hold your finger on that part of the video and drag a square around it. And that square will not show up in the video and not uh, be a trigger. So you hit done and it'll, it'll save your zones. Re-trigger time. Adjust time after a motion event during which the camera will not detect motion. If I've got somebody breaking into the house, I want it to be sitting there triggering, alerting, throwing notifications and everything because something bad is going to happen. So I've got mine set very low. If uh, you can set it high if you want to, that's just one of the things I do. Early notification it says receive a notification as soon as motion is detected instead of after the motion clip finished recording. I want to know now. Somebody breaking in, I want to know. So mine is set to own. All right, we'll go to the next one is video and photo settings. Uh, you can set your motion clip link. Motion clip length. Uh, you can set it as low as five seconds and you can go up to 60 seconds. I have mine set for 20, which is right, you know, almost in the middle. You go to 60, you're using your battery and your storage and your bandwidth. Um, but if you don't have a problem with it, have it. Video quality, adjust the video resolution of the camera. You have a saver, standard, and best. These are 1080 cameras. Saver is 480, standard is 720, best is 1080. I have mine set to standard, which is good enough. Now, if you're having a point at the driveway, you want to see a car tag or somebody's face, you might want to crank it up to 1080. Battery and storage. Now, you gotta always weigh, weigh them out. Uh, end clip early if motion stops. Uh, you can, if, if whatever's happening stops and there's no motion, you can stop it. I don't want that. I want mine to video the whole length of the time if somebody's breaking in, they see the cameras recording them and they stop. I want that sucker to still I stay on them. I want to see their face. Night vision. Adjust the night vision setting for your camera. You have auto, on, and off. I let the camera do that for me, so I have it set to auto. The IR intensity, infrared intensity. Adjust the brightness of the infrared LED to control glare or show more detail when night vision is enabled. You have a low, medium, and high. I have mine set to medium for here. The cameras do a great job, uh, even in a very low light or no light situation. They do really well. Photo settings. Photo capture. Take a photo once per hour when enabled and armed. You have to have a blink subscription for this. If I hit the button, it says you can capture photos, save live views, and much more if you have a subscription. I do not have a subscription. I use local storage. So just be cognizant of that. Audio settings. Right there, speaker volume. So the cameras have a microphone and speaker. Adjust the speaker volume of your camera. I have mine turned wide open. If I need to holler at somebody, holler at the dog, 
uh, talk to Tanya or something through the camera. If you go to the live view of the camera, which I'll show you in a little bit, you can hold the microphone button down and you can talk. And when you get through talking, you let up. The person on the other end can talk. The dog can talk. If your dog can, mine can. Mine has the attention span of a cricket. So let's see, privacy settings. This goes back to the privacy zones where you can set up zones in your motion detection. So I'll do that and see the little black square. That is where I pulled my finger across it and made a privacy zone. So right there, video recording and audio streaming. You can turn it off. Let's say you're having a party or a bunch of kids over or something. You don't want them on video. You can turn that off. If you don't want to listen to the noise, you can turn the audio streaming off. So works very well. And that's everything on the device settings. So if we look, we have a camera and a video icon at the bottom. If I take a picture on the right hand side, it takes a new thumbnail for that. And you'll see it right here. And you'll see the privacy zone in the thumbnail. There's a little square there that'll show up. Now, if I hit the video button, it will go to a live view. And you hear, and you hear the noise. We got all kind of birds and air conditioner and everything else. Around. Now, if I want to hold the, there's a hold to talk button. I can hold and I can talk to the camera to whoever's outside out there. That's all I have to do. And we'll let it off of it. You hear all that mess. That works really well, you know, so I don't have to run out the door and run down the steps and go, hey, you know. So all three cameras, and then you have the sync module. The sync module is right over here on my wall, and I have a USB drive hooked into it to where I keep all the clips. So it shows the sync modules online and the firmware version. Firmware is the software that runs on the sync module. There's firmware on the cameras, and that's just software that runs on the device. Anything with a chip, just about, has firmware. So we have our local storage, that's the USB drive, and it shows a little green USB is connected into it, and I'm using 1% of it. And it shows the three cameras down here, and down at the very bottom, it has a safe eject USB. You have to push that to eject the drive from there so you can pull it out and take and put it in your computer. And uh, you can share your files with like insurance or the sheriff or whatever, or family member. Uh, I'll show you another way to do that here in just a minute. Uh, you can go change the Wi-Fi network that your system is on. Let's say you get a new router or you have to change your SSID for some kind of uh, security reason. You can do that right here. Very easy to do. Just takes a minute. Below that, you have the arm and disarm buttons. If you arm it, you'll get a notification pops up from the bottom that says downstairs system is armed. Whatever your system name is will be armed and you'll start getting notifications. I'll turn it back off so we don't. All right, so down at the bottom, we have three buttons. We have home, clips, and settings. Settings for this is for the complete system and your account and all that stuff. But we'll go to clips. Now, if you have a cloud subscription, you'll see cloud and you'll click cloud up here. And if you'll see on mine, it, mine expired on 12-7 of 22. Um, that's when I started using the local storage. So I'll go to my downstairs system and you'll see that I have clips. And the last one was Tuesday night. And if I click that, it will pull from the USB drive over here. And you'll see my wife walking across the backyard there. She triggered the camera, her and the dog. Now, there's a trash can and an iOS share button on the video. If I click the iOS share button, 
and I scroll up a little bit, I can save the video to my phone. That way I can share with insurance, sheriff, family member, whatever from here. I don't have to pull the drive out. I don't have to manipulate it through the computer and everything. I can do everything right here. If I go to my photos app, there it is. Just that easy. That's another one of those things that just works. Um, I, I enjoy things that just work. So there you have clips. Now the settings, you have account and privacy. This is your Blink account, the privacy settings, two-factor authentication, all that stuff. I'm not gonna share that with you, but we will go to device and system settings. So we have my downstairs system and my temperature units, which is Fahrenheit. If you like Celsius, by all means. Uh, downstairs system, I can actually tap to sort cameras. I, if I wanna see my garage first in the list, Grab a hold of it, drag it up. That is easy. Scheduling. You can schedule your cameras to be armed or disarmed at certain times of day and days. Um, so you have your kids out playing and everything. You don't want all those triggers. You can schedule it to be disarmed. You can set your time zone. You can go to your sync module, and this is the same page that we looked at before. If you have a subscription, you can save all your live views. So if you hit the, the video button on your camera, it goes into a live view, you can save it. You know, if that's what you want to do. Now you can't do that to USB, you can only do it with the cloud. Uh, notifications, you can go in and disable events and alerts. Let's say you don't want uh, camera temperature alerts or events, you can turn them off. Um, you don't want to know when your cameras are scheduled to disarm an arm if you just know it turn it off or like me you can just turn them all on and leave it it doesn't bother me at all and then there's a couple of things you know what's new with blink and uh, customer support and all that stuff but yeah that is and now you can see my garage camera is top of the list right there it just works so that is the Blink camera application for iPhone. iPad is exactly the same, just bigger. Um, honestly, I like it on the iPad better because it's bigger and I can do things on it. But uh, if you all you got your phone with you, pull it up, do your thing and go. Like I said, the way I have them set, I have not changed the batteries. Uh, we get all the alerts, we get all the notifications. Um, that's all I can say for it. It's, it's just a really good system. If now it does not work with HomeKit or Home Assistant yet uh, fully, it uses a different protocol for the video streaming um, than what those systems like. I really wish they would incorporate with a HomeKit type deal. It, uh, it would be nice. Maybe now that matters coming out, it, they will. I hope. If you if you are using uh, Blink cameras, Blink doorbells, Blink whatever, let me know in the comments. I'd like to know. Uh, I've had good luck with them. I hope you have too. If you got any questions or comments, leave them in the bottom. I respond to all comments and questions. If I can't find an answer, I will find somebody that can give you one. Uh, I enjoy helping people, I and mean, that's one of the reasons I enjoy doing these videos, so I can help, and I learn a lot in the process as well, so it's pretty neat. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to be notified when I add more content, which I plan on doing. I add one or two videos a week uh, when time allows. Hope everybody's having a great day and a great week. And I meant, forgot to say, and if you're over on Rumble, rumble.com, look me up. I'm over there too. Uh, social media, I post on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I'm on Facebook every once in a while. Um, don't post a whole lot, but I'm, I'm on there. But I uh, hope everybody's having a good day and a good week. And hope you have a good weekend. And like I always say, until the next video, thanks for watching.